welcome back to the darkest world podcast i'm your host tara and today we are going back in time to ireland 1990 mary robinson would become the seventh and fourth female president of ireland brian keenan who spent 1574 days in captivity in beirut was released and ira activity was at an all-time high this is also the year that a 30-year unsolved murder would take place this is the murder of Desi Fox. On September 30th, 1990, bookmaker Desi Fox was travelling from his home in Tyrone, Northern Ireland to Cadair, the Republic of Ireland, for a race at the Cora race course in a white Mercedes. As he was a bookmaker, he was carrying around £20,000 in cash. At around 1.20pm that day, he was seen coming out of Connolly's news agent shop in Prosperous Village, with a newspaper under his arm. He then got into his car, which was followed by a red car. As he was driving to the Cora, he was ambushed. The occupants of a red Toyota Carina behind him opened fire on his car at Heedy's Bridge in Pro- Prosperous, causing damage to the right rear indicator and the front left tyre. Desi, who was 47 at the time, attempted to reverse away, but his vehicle left the road, forcing him into a stop. The raiders then caught up with him and as they approached, one shot from a handgun through the passenger door. The bullet entered Desi's leg, which severed a main artery. A black leather briefcase containing a large quantity of cash was stolen from him, along with a canvas money bag, a portable car phone and car keys. The canvas and car phone were later recovered. After they shot him and robbed him, they fled the scene. Desi's death really shocked everyone that knew him. He was well liked, he was well known in the bookmaker scene and nobody really knew of anyone that would want to hurt him. I guess a lot of factors would play into who might want to hurt him. Number one being his job. You know, I don't know what being a bookmaker was like in the 90s but But one has to assume that carrying that amount of cash around with you would paint some sort of target on your back. By who? I don't know. This was almost certainly not a random attack either. Somebody knew what route he took and they chose to target him at a certain part of his journey. In, like They decided not to rob him in, say, Dungannon in Tyrone or in South Armagh or in Monaghan or in Dundalk. In other words, the logistics of the gang would suggest that it was somebody from the Greater Dublin area, rather than the likes of Monaghan or from the north of Ireland. And then the big why question has to come into play. Why Desi? He definitely was not the only bookmaker on the scene. We have to start working out the aspects of why him. Was there somebody in the gambling or in the bookmaker scene? or even in the general race scene, who knew that he was carrying large sums of money. In regards to the investigation, Gardy have a number of theories. The cold case Yona have been investigating the attack, which is believed to have been planned by a criminal gang with IRA connections at the time. There is one theory that I keep seeing come up over and over again, and it seems to me, at least, that the Gardy really think that this is their main theory and what has probably happened. Desi was killed by rogue provisional IRA terrorists looking for the money. All those theories though happened early on in the investigation so it's safe to say for at least 25 years that there was no um, no leads whatsoever. No one came forward. I assume by fear of repercussions of talking, until 2018. In 2018, two men were arrested on suspicion of being involved in the murder. A 61-year-old man who was currently being quizzed by detectives is believed to have organised the ambush and murder of Desi. This individual was only recently released from jail and has been convicted of IRA membership as well as firearm offences dating back to the 1980s. Following the arrests, the two men were released to charge. I assume there wasn't enough evidence to link them to Desi's murder and they 
most certainly we're not going to talk. It's been two years since those two men were arrested and there's still no further developments in the case. It seems like Desi's murder has truly gone cold, unless somebody speaks up. 1,500 people interviewed, 500 statements and 17 people have been arrested. And yet no one has been convicted and brought to justice. Desi's daughter Lorna has said, We miss him every day and we lost so much that day and so did my dad. He has missed seeing us grow up, start jobs, get married and have our own children. We believe there are people out there who know what happened to my dad. This case is a hard case in so many ways, being there's not a lot of information out there. There's not been a lot of developments for the police to go on. It's just, it's going to take somebody stepping up and revealing what really happened that day. If you or anyone you know has information on the murder of Desi Fox, you are urged to contact the confidential phone line. It's been 30 years since Desi died. I think it's time that his family gets some closure.